For me, the people who work in helping people develop a lifelong involvement in sport play a huge and valuable role. 20 play, kill the ball, stand on it, kill. Grassroots football is the life blood of, uh, of football and therefore uh, it's very important that uh, we get as much effort and put into grassroots football and we need the coaches here who are involved in it. Who can drive? Come on, good lad. Does your dad know? Well, my name's Tosh, Tosh Fano. I'm currently the head of international football development at uh, Everton Youth Academy and I was formerly the technical coordinator for the 7s oh, to 12s. Fantastic. Now I'm going to ask you another question. I like asking questions. Do you want to fight? Right. You know, we wait then. First of all, as a person, I've just de this. benefited so much from like being this. in sport. I'm a parent, I, I have five like kids, that. and I think one of the, the most valuable things they can do is to play sport. It develops them Dick. physically, Dick. it develops That's their it. confidence. It's really good for them. Uh, the coach must be an inspirator, I think. And, and then you can confront them with everything because that's and, and especially in this time of computer generation and, and less survival mentality of kids you must confront them you can only confront them yeah. when they know no. I'm on your side no good otherwise they will drop off what the yeah. man of Chelsea says 85 percent and we forget that a critical element of the process is the role of the coach their, their skills, their experiences, their observational and communication skills that they need to be able to, to watch the players and not only monitor how they're physically responding to the training that they're doing, but how they're interacting with their teammates, are they irritable, are they withdrawn within themselves, all these sort of key psychological parameters. Do they notice a change in the, in the player? You have influence on the character development automatically because he has success, he has more self-confidence. How important is self-confidence for kids? How many, how many kids are struggling with self-confidence? Are we aware of that? How many kids are going down? For example, it's unbelievable. So also that aspect makes the self-confidence grow, the self-discipline. They get a goal in life. They don't go to McDonald's because they want to achieve something. It's really that fire motivation that will keep children and indeed older players going uh, right through their careers. And crucially, you know, when they come against obstacles or difficulties or problems, it'll be that fire and motivation that keep them going. So, what are the Very things good. that light the fire? Well, you know, curiously enough, the coach themselves. Um, and the small and younger players actually identify as really much with the person who stands in front of imagine. them as they do with the game. So, the way in which we present ourselves and interact with the kids, small things, like welcoming them, like knowing their name, like treating them in the right way, like having fun sessions. They're not adults, the seven-year-olds who, who will learn rapidly, yeah, because they're like sponges. But, but if we try to take, and it goes back to the short steps earlier on, if we try to make it a leap, the, the, prog the progression, I think that, will, that, that that's detrimental to their development. We have to meet them with their, where they are. Performance is interesting. If you look at the factors that are key to performance, there's the genetics in terms of your, 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 your physical makeup, but then there's the environment. So it's this big debate over nature versus nurture. And I think most people would agree now there's a combination of the two. If you want to peak as a performer, your technical and tactical, physical and mental, personal social and lifestyle skills all need to come together. So if you ignore one or a number of those, well then you're not going to peak. So really, in terms of practice, if you want to excel, you need to ensure that those elements are dealt with within your whole practice routine. Coaches focus on the outcome and the big picture um, too much. And we sometimes forget the process of, of, of how to get them there. And I believe that the strides that they have to take should be uh, relevant to that, the learning capabilities of that player and he should be a lot smaller, a lot more detail put into those small sets. So the core skills that we're trying to uh, develop in the players are fully enhanced.
Skills training, I don't like the term. It's a total development. You're the trainer and the coach. You train the qualities, what make the difference, and you coach them. So skills training, out. It's, 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 it's a philosophy. Technique is the actual doing the move. The skill is being able to apply that move in a certain situation on, on the pitch. And while we can all be really proficient technically, when the, the game will challenge us to produce that technique under pressure in a certain situation, are we developing players who can apply that in the game? Uh, I think w when you train an individual, everybody uh, responds differently. The human body is a complex biological system, so we all respond differently to the same training. So effectively, it's, it's the skill of the coach to make sure that the training load is appropriate. Leadership is, I improve, that when I am on this level, that I help the weakest. So there's also character development, because you, 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 you talk with them. When you are the best, you help the weakest. Simple. Not that we are a social uh, club, but it's, 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 it's how it works. We have to appreciate that they're going to make uh, an awful lot of mistakes, but within that, there's going to be an awful lot of good stuff, something to build on, which we should be observant enough to, to take out, put it, log it, and build on it in the next session. So also the human qualities will grow at the same time that the technical tactical ability will grow and that's something fantastic what a lot of football coaches underestimate because I think because the ball well, inspires here, more kids than any, anything else. In any given club or in any given sport what we can say is look here's the progressions we want kids to pass through and I don't think the coach should be too concerned about what other coaches are doing but they should be really clear about what they can contribute to the development of that kid at that particular stage. Only functional dribbling. Shield. Fantastic. Shield. Fantastic. So you must run up to the person with the ball, otherwise there's not going to be no space behind you. Yeah, okay, yeah, we're ready. Go! Yeah, run! Get there right now, we're cooking. That's better. Go and get it, man! Go and get it, man! If we were to lose 5 0 in an academy game, does that mean that your session is dictated by the result and you start doing defending of the next session in? If you fail to score, does that dictate that you do shooting? Or do you stick to your philosophy and develop the players that within the area that's, that's needed for them and stage by stage build, build it up? The coaches are spoiled from academies. Huh? They, they have no count of, hey, when you don't produce over two years, uh, you will, will be sacked. They take another player in and they say, yeah, he didn't have it. No, you get players in who are all talented and gifted, so you must work with them. We try to encourage them not to be, uh, have a fear of failing. When we take that pressure away and say, look, play like this, in order to get to you where you want to go, these are the things that we sometimes we, we'll have to do, even though if you don't want to do them, to get you there. You must not be political. At the moment that you do this, this, this work, you have the intention to take optimum out of every player to give him the opportunity to, 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 to raise his potential. And I will take and most of the responsibility for, for failure. I think that's important. So You need brave people. And that's why I like Will Curver. He's brave, who stands for people. And that's the essence of this work. Not only uh, be a, a fantastic trainer coach, but also be an idealist. And believe in, 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 in people and in their potential. Create chances. Okay, well done. Come on, boys. Smile, huh? You're angry? Go! Four! Three! Two! One! Ah! Time! Come in, come in, come in, come on, come on. I think because. You know, there's so many volunteers, people kind of say, oh, well, you know, that's just, that's just coaching. Well, for me, it's, it's, it's as valuable, if not more valuable, than other professions. So, I think as European qualifications develop, we just need to stake that ground out and make people really clear that coaching is very, very valuable. And if you're a professional coach, that there's decent career structures and supports for you. Or if you're a volunteer, that you're rewarded.
you know, by recognition. And, you know, for example, in Germany, if, if you get a, a coaching qualification and are a volunteer, the government will make sure you get a tax break of about a thousand euros. So there's lots of different ways in which we can just get that recognition for, for coaching as a profession.